one of the things that Brexit was going to deliver very unexpectedly, much to the chagrin of Brexiteers, was that union activity was going to increase after Brexit. And why is this the case? Well, prior to Brexit, the unions knew that regulations and workers' rights were no longer the full domain of the UK government. Yes, they could still do stuff, but a lot more of the action, shall we say, was going on in Brussels. So all their lobbying, all their groups moved over to Brussels to get a piece of that action, to have a say for British workers in those discussions and new regulations when they were brought up in the EU. Now, of course, we're out of the EU. So what do you think happens now? All those lessons learned in Brussels, all that lobbying knowledge, all those strategies and tactics are now coming back across to here. And the we've already seen just this summer alone, because, very much so because of the cost of living crisis, but mainly we've got the RMT unions. There are other unions as well planning to go on strike this summer. And we are going to see a lot more union activity. Trust me, you can guarantee the unions are going to become very, very active because all those, um, all that knowledge and all that experience in Brussels is now coming back over to here. And trust me, they intend to put it to use. And that is one thing the Tories do not want. The Brexiteers did not want that because they want to get rid of workers' rights. They want to strip away protections and regulations that protect workers so that, you know, companies can, you know, exploit their workers. That was part of the reason for Brexit as well. And of course, it seems that this is now certainly the plan for the Tory party. But before we do get into today's uh, Tory story, um, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a web donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help support the channel that way. So this comes from The Guardian uh, with the title of Liz, Pl Liz, Liz, Plus? Liz Truss Pledges to Crack Down on Unions, but is accused of Tory fantasy. So Liz Truss, has promised a further crackdown on trade unions, widening restrictions to a significant number of industries. And again, this is one of the things that came out of, oh, critical industries. But what technically is a critical industry? Because technically, if the Tories really wanted to, anything could get described as a critical industry. And then, well, <laughs> no strikes for you then. Anyway, it continues. But her proposals were immediately criticised as the biggest attack on civil rights since the 19th century. Trust says that she would legislate for a minimum service levels on critical national infrastructure in the first 30 days of the government under her leadership. The pledge would go further than the Tories' 2019 prom policy, which promised a minimum service should operate during transport strikes. The new law proposed by Trust would potentially restrict teachers postal workers, and in the energy sector, and tailored minimum thresholds, including staffing levels, would be determined by each industry. Mick Lynch, the General Secretary of the RMT, said that unions would organise mass resistance if her plans went ahead, calling it the biggest attack on trade union and civil rights since the labour unions were legalised back in 1871. So this is definitely something we need to fight back against and something that we need to be aware of, because this isn't just going to affect, as was said there, you know, teachers, the trains and the energy industry. This will could and eventually affect everyone who may one day want to strike for better pay, better conditions. So make no mistake, this isn't just a fight for a small group of people. This is really a fight for all the working people across the country. So anyway, uh, Mick Lynch went on to say, Truss is proposing to make, uh, to make effective trade unionism illegal in Britain and to rob working people of the key demographic right, he said. Uh, democratic, democratic right, sorry. 
He said, and if these proposals become law, there will be the biggest resistance mounted by the entire union movement, rivaling the general strikes of 1926, the suffragettes and chartism. The Labour deputy leader, Angela Rayner, said that these proposed changes would do nothing to tackle the cost of living crisis and accused the Tory candidate of a full scale arms race exacerbated by tensions and, exas and, ex to, and to escalate divisions. Rail services are now severely disrupted from Wednesday, with thousands of workers from the National Rail and over 14 train operators striking. Further rail strikes are expected this summer, and thousands of Royal Mail workers have also voted to strike in disputes over pay, which could also be the biggest industrial action over the summer. Britain could also face a new unprecedented wave of strike action from teaching staff to and to doctors in the autumn over their below inflation pay offers. Trust me, we've got all this action coming and the Tories have no plan, no plan to actually sort these out. They're quite content to let these people strike and then, oh, guess we'll just have to, you know, crush the trade unions, which you do not want to do. Unions serve a very good and valid purpose in, a, in any democracy and is something that we should value and cherish. So earlier this month, MPs approved controversial plans to allow agency staff to replace striking workers, which should never have been allowed to happen, uh, which unions say could potentially affect the security of key services. Trust has also pledged to raise ballot thresholds from 40 to 50 percent of employees. The move would potentially make it much harder to strike in smaller workplaces where reaching that threshold will require a very high number in favour if there is not a full turnout. Unions have also questioned how trusts would implement a proposed cooling off period so that unions could no longer strike as many times as they like in six months period after a ballot. Trust has pledged to increase the minimum notice period for strike action from two weeks to four weeks, a pledge which will make it easier for industries to use new powers to employ agency workers to run services. Announcing these policies, Trust said, we need tough and decisive action to limit trade unions. The ability to, pan up, to paralyze our economy. I will do everything in my power to make sure that these militant action from trade unions can no longer cripple vital services that hardworking people rely on. Um, how about you actually eliminate their need to strike to begin with by, you know, actually treating them like human beings, by negotiating with them, by making sure that they already have good worker rights, good good sticks good situations in their workplace that they've got good pay <laughs> you know instead oh no we'll just go after the trade unions because that's that'll solve the problem both teaching and health unions have warned of potential strike actions over the latest pay offers NHS staff are to receive the rise of the latest at least 4.5, while teachers will have the least uh, at a 5% increase. However, inflation is currently running at 9.1% and is expected to rise to 11% this year, according to the Bank of England. The TUC General Secretary, Francis O'Grady, said that for anyone uh, working today, this would be an unprecedented attack on one of the most important rights, the freedom to take collective action. And it would be severely upset the balance of power between working people and employers. Because remember, the, the right there, striking is one of the very few actions you have against your employer. You and Brexit was part of a move to strip away workers' rights. It is something that we must now watch like a hawk because of Brexit. Anyway, uh, she continues. So instead of taking pot shots at working people and their unions, the candidate should instead come up with plans to get wages rising again. That's how to deal with the cost of living of, of, of the cost of living emergency. And again, absolutely right. Put proposals like that forward. Don't just go after working people and their unions. That's not a solution to this problem. That's only going to make things even worse. Rayner said that plans for the minimum staffing levels had never been explained in practice and were unworkable. She said, Liz Truss is looking to blame anyone and everyone else other than herself for the mess Conservatives have made over the last 12 years. Her latest Tory fantasy is dangerously out of touch with reality and ignores the stubborn fact that she has sat around a cabinet table for nearly a decade of pitifully low-wage growth, 
crumbling public services and sleaze at the heart of government. We, uh, as we, uh, as we, uh, as we saw with the government's plan to break strikes with agency workers, these plans are unworkable and will only erode people's working rights and further inflame industrial relations at a critical time. And yeah, uh, I, I completely agree. Um, but it just goes to show you how not only, first of all, out of touch to the Tory party leadership race certainly is, the fact that Trust thinks, no, instead of actually coming up with a plan, maybe to, you know, raise workers' wages, instead, no, it must be the unions and the fact that we've got to stop workers striking against their employers. And again, to reiterate what uh, the TUC leader said, yeah, it, it, it does bring a very dangerous balance in, in that workers will not have a power to negotiate any more with their employers. If you take strike action off the table, then the employer can really start to do some dangerous things, especially in a small workplace, as we've brought up there. If you've got a small workplace and you do not have like a full turnout, you could find an employer could use that to their advantage to basically um, do all kinds of stuff, knowing full well that they will never have a full turnout and that they will never be able to go on strike. This represents a very, very dangerous step forward uh, by the Tories and unfortunately illustrates one of the key areas we were warning about all the way back in 2016, that if you vote for Brexit, they will be coming after workers' rights. They want to strip that away from people. So, as always, thank you very much uh, for watching. And of course, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe uh, button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, if you are a YouTuber, there is a YouTube union. It's called Fairtube. You should see a little button down there. Go check them out. Uh, they are quite, uh, quite good. And of course, they're a YouTube union. So, you know, go sign up with them. So, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for watching. And of course, we'll see you all next time.